The United Nations in Zambia is responding to data and statistics about the prevalence of disability in Zambia. This translates to over one million persons across the country. These challenges that persons with disabilities face in rural areas are fueled by stigma and discrimination. Challenges of accessibility. This is not just accessibility towards infrastructure, we're talking about accessibility to education, accessibility in employment, accessibility to social protection programs. What are the key challenges that contributes? One, we have the issue of stereotypes. Many people believe persons with disabilities just need to be taken care of. They cannot do much on their own, so why bother about them? And this informs people's decisions. Cultural beliefs and, and uh, it's really a problem, yes? Especially in rural areas. They think that a person with disability to have him in, in, in a family, it's a taboo. Many people are being misled. Mao, especially by witchcraft, with doctors and what have you. So it's important that we educate people so that they are aware and they know the way to go. So now today, they still find it challenging because most people don't really focus on the deafs as well as the disabled people. It's hard for them to really find a job. So they are always worried about that, how they can take care of themselves. But they do not have enough support. Some of the challenges that persons with disabilities face is rejection, uh, discrimination and rejection starts from family level because when a child with a disability is born they are rejected by the family and the community at large uh, particularly with people with albinism right now the the main challenges that people with albinism are facing is their attacks people with albinism are hunted for their body parts and this is simply because there is a belief that body parts of persons with albinism can be used to cure diseases and to make uh, someone rich. So because of that, uh, people with albinism are hunted, they are attacked and they are killed for their body parts. The United Nations in Zambia is working with the government of the Republic of Zambia, such as Zambia Agency for Persons with Disabilities and the House of Chiefs. We have decided to use this particular approach because Traditional leaders play a critical role in advancing social justice, cultural values, and development in the rural part of Zambia. We feel as an agency, the involvement of traditional leaders is especially important because they are the custodian of our traditions and culture in our country. The House of Chiefs has a structure that is able to go all the way to community level through the area headmen and village headmen. Using these headmen and the sub-chiefs in the district, we will be able to bring the message closer to its uh, citizens and dwellers of various communities. Armed with proper information, positive knowledge, they will impart this information to the rest of the people. So what we want to do right now is now to bring those people that we work together with them so that they can also feel like people just like ourselves. Our approach is to run workshop over a period of days which we hope that they'll bring about behavioral change and perceptions changing towards persons with abilities within the community. We bring chiefs to one place and organizations of persons with disabilities, OPDs, government institutions, those responsible for health, education, employment, and information, so that we can sit around a table and discuss pertinent issues that border on the rights of persons with disabilities. We look at definitions of disability. We look at the myth and misconception that fuel disability discrimination within the community. What language is respectful? What language is most preferred? We had phrases like handicapped, crippled, and unfortunately, even in some of 
our laws today. We're still using archaic uh, phrases. We also look at the evolution of inclusion from exclusion, segregation, integration into inclusion and provide them with practical steps on how they can create a leadership within their chiefdoms. Some of the outcomes are that persons with disabilities will begin to take practical steps to begin to raise awareness and advocate for their own rights. We are also seeing different groups of persons with disabilities forming cooperatives, forming civil society organizations coming together to engage in various activities such as farming, carpentry and beekeeping. We do uh, make crutches for people in road accidents. Suppose they get being amputated the leg, so we make uh, wooden crutches for them. Also, we do wheelchair repairing. Also, we help to repair the artificial legs for those who are amputated. We have also a farm field where we have cultivated maize. So after we sell the farm produce, so that we can revamp also this organization, this club. Through that, we can be sustainable in one way or other, rather than begging around the streets. Yes, we are 25 members in this club. We start this club in 2018. We need, we saw dresses, and we saw tablecloths and doormats. We saw these dresses, and they give us maize, and we, we change cloths and maize. Then we put this, and we sell at the market. They have this rearing of chickens project and they are thankful for it. They've bought the things needed. The things are the feed that they give to the chickens, which is helping them to grow. What we have done as a school, we normally orient the learners with, without disabilities to accept their friends with disabilities. If you check around, you see that those who are able, they are the one even pushing chairs for the disabled because they have accepted their friends. And what, what we normally do, every time we have assemblies, we have motivational talks. We normally call people from other stakeholders to come and give to motivation talk to the learners so that they accept their friends at school. We are also expecting an outcome where traditional leaders will begin now to consult and engage persons with disabilities on developmental agendas in their chiefdoms. It is good progress because we are seeing good collaborations with the chiefs themselves. They are coming to our meetings and they are expressing their interest and uh, willingness for them to be part of the solution. It's timely and we are hoping that uh, this can be replicated to the other traditional uh, leaders. It's a sad situation. I, in my chiefdom, I want everyone to include them in whatever, in our day-to-day -day life, in whatever we do. If we include them, their life is likely to change. We've seen uh, with our own eyes how other people, like where we are, how he's able to live, to support his life, uh, to support his family. Uh, he's taking two children to school. In two, he's in two various uh, business. Whatever I've been taught, I want to implement it. The Kosrisha, the Shampoo Bonse, the Bamunemus, the two in Tukat and the Chapamo, to Monokutra to Abombella Chapamo, Gutunga Baba Nensu, Pagu to Wukashi Wesu, Waba Pantas, which if you don't get what I want to buy, take a Nishnefumina to eat a take. No more Bobupina, Nishnefum we pin. We really need to change our mindset. These are our brothers and sisters who are the same. They may not be able to do what we can do at a certain time and at a certain late, but they also need help. We need to include them in whatever we are doing. Together with other UN joint partners, 
could encourage other UN agencies and civil society organizations to engage, to bring on board the House of Chiefs in bringing about a different mind perspective at community level and villages that persons with disabilities live. This has been very instrumental in driving an inclusive development that does not leave anyone behind.